second phase of the attack is the breaking. This is get him or her to click. Once I'm, I'm ready, I, I, I the trust of, of the person again. Uh, I design my uh, least sophisticated attack that will work, and I will get them to click. And and and, and one one person was actually a customer was actually joking to me, saying that he wished his marketing people were as clever as these guys because people click on the on the phishing attacks and they don't click that much on the on that bank's uh, email. And uh, so so what. The, they do is that they do sophisticated things like sending you a PDF or a Word file or a GIF, etc. That you, you you click on it, you see it as a GIF, you see it as a PDF, but also it downloads uh, some DLLs that you don't see, some executables that you don't see, jar files, etc. And they will install services. You know, after they. They compromise the machine, and you know they do, you know either command and control or they do RAT, which is remote access terminals, uh, the type of control of your machine. And how do you protect about uh, against these? Well, some people say, well, the solution for this is doing white listing, which means I'm gonna only allow people to run uh, the applications that uh, that I want them to to run. The problem is that the combination of XX and DLL is so big that this is not very practical unless you have a very homogeneous system like let's say that you have a, some point of sales or some type of machines that are very homogeneous and then you can actually uh, you know implement that or uh, you can do some virtual desktop type of solution like thin clients uh, solutions of that type uh, that, that sometimes works. Uh, Another another thing that you definitely need to do is that you you should do some user education. You should have programs that teach your people what not to do. This is your inside militia. This is the people that should know that you don't click on anything that you haven't looked for. If you're doing something and you get a pop, hi, oh, you know, we got a new version of this or that. Uh, no, I'm gonna when I get my updates, I get it some other way. Either I get my endpoint to do it for me, my my company takes care of that. But I I, I don't click on anything I'm not actually looking for. Those type of things. Uh, the, the one another measure that that is very helpful is actually has to do with the emails, and that the company should be able to clearly allow the users to differentiate between an internal and external email. So they, they when when they see an external email, the, their their guard would be up, and they're going to be less trustful than than. Uh, I mean, in fact, some people say, well, you know, I, I will I will implement a virtual inbox. So you can only uh, look at your email uh, within a virtual, some sort of a virtualization, some containment on itself. But that is sometimes very impractical because people want to get those those attachment that comes with the email, and that that makes it uh, very hard. The other the other thing uh, on the breaking that is very important is what is called the waterhole attacks. Very very popular these days. Uh, the the waterhole is just comes you know. It's, it's, so, so, like the like the lion that hides where where the zebras go to uh, to uh, to drink water and then they attack them when they get there and and what what the objective is well let's say that I have looked at your defenses uh, me as an as a hacker and, and I think that uh, your defenses are so good that I'm going to try who are the the business partner the third parties that you actually. Uh, uh, use. So for example, let's say that you, your employees uh, use this uh, particular company for travel, to making their travel. Uh, so when they do, they feel like they are part of the company. So I'm going to attack that if the defenses of that travel company are not as good as yours, and I'm going to get, you know, your people to actually, uh, I compromise that site and get them to uh, to, to d deliver my payload in that way. And, and that is particularly important for developers. Uh, Lately, we, we have seen uh, that in Microsoft and Apple, they, they compromise uh, developers, which are not dumb people, you know, uh, and that, that went into a site that they trust. They, 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 the hackers compromise that site and they deliver the payload. Um, and that one of the things that we actually do is our developer uh, every I mean when they all their code goes into a rational central central uh, type of database where all the all the code is uh, uh, 
is kept, and then every day when the machine reboots, the machine gets re-imaged. Some people thought that, that those were very drastic measures that when we implemented that uh, far more than a year ago, but now they understand why we did that. Uh, the other thing that you can do, and, and you may may have some sort of uh, IP reputation. In fact, we, we, we feed our X-Force IP reputation in, in, in several of our products. So whenever you see that, uh, that an IP that has been attacking somewhere else performs something bad, then you, you actually... Uh, you know, prevent that that communication from from from, from happening. Uh, the problem with this is that uh, this has to be very fresh information, and sometimes the hacker gets you know uh, IPs that are only going to be used first with your company, so that IP reputation may not work. But if you have mechanism, and we will talk later about this, of doing some some sort of a uh, uh, after hours. Uh, checking on the on the sites that are not classified and you investigate those that that may actually uh, help you there but again the objective of that person is, uh, of that attacker is to get this internal individual to actually go into the internet into my bad side and uh, deliver my my payload so we are on the third phase which is when that malware begins to phone or radio home and this is the, the the command and control facet of the of the attack. Well, uh, here is is your prime first prime opportunity to get them, and uh, but you need to have some some good technology, m far more than just log management, uh, something like uh, like what we do with Curator, that actually not only looks at the events that that's part of the picture, but also look at the net flow. This is the most the precious data this is the layer four this is not just event this is what is happening on the network this is what you cannot hide uh, this is not just uh, talking about uh, an ip but actually looking at who log in where and so so when i report an, an ip is this particular user uh, th this is getting the analyzing the the, the the type of protocol that people are using and, and i can detect for example that uh, somebody's doing rc chatting on port 80 well, that's a clear indication of, of a border control because our IRC is not done over port 80. But again, if you only look at the event, you're going to be missing all that. Uh, have the, the, the capability of detecting new services. That's, that's what part of the problem. Some of the uh, SIM technology out there, you need to tell them what you have. Uh, that's not doesn't work because you don't know everything you have and you cannot protect what you don't know that you have. So uh, this stuff detects because it knows the protocol. It, it detects, you know, uh, things that are there. Uh, also have the capability of checking for queue flows, which are layer seven. This is the payload of the data. So, so this is a great way of really looking at command and control. Um, the, the other thing is uh, that uh, this has the capability of doing network behavior anomaly detection, and, and we will get uh, some more information on that because the command and control can be actually hidden as a as a GIF file, and, and you, you don't know, you know what this GIF file in the, is, is, is doing and what it's doing is actually it, it contains in, in an encrypted form uh, what what the bad guys wants to actually do. Some effective ways of uh, really protecting besides having uh, uh, top quality SIM uh, uh, for detecting the, those anomalies. Uh, the other thing that you that you can do is actually this is a very promising area is DNS forensic. You, need, you see, when, when, a, when a DNS, when you do a bind, basically you, 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 you get the IP address of, of a domain name that you are actually looking for. Uh, but if you were able to, for example, check the register of all the domains that you actually get and say, well, is this a, a, a register that I, that I trust? It is, you know, China Post or, you know, something that... Uh, we should not be doing any business with, with those or trusting any one of those certificates or, or the certificate was actually issued <laughs> two days ago or the, 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 was the, the domain was registered two days ago but that, that's very suspicious or I see that the IP of the same domain that I keep going to changes uh, every two days or so. So, so that's a sign that they are hiding something. But can you do that when you get 100,000 uh, events per second? No. This is something that you need to do offline, and we'll talk more to the end of this chart when we talk about big data. Uh, things that checking like uh, are all my IP address in the DNS cache, meaning you know everything was done through DNS resolution, or you know I got applications and things that went directly to the IP that's going going to the IP directly is, is a sign of 
of a malware type of uh, communication. Uh, are you inspecting your SSL traffic? Do you have the capability of really detecting or, or, or encrypting the SSL traffic at your IPS or at the uh, web application firewall? Because the thing is that if if the bad guys, uh, uh, the malware uh, puts a, uh, an HTTPS session, a tunnel, uh, b between this point and this point, whatever you have in the middle cannot actually detect what is there unless you are decrypting the SSL traffic. Uh, are you analyzing all the protocols that, are, that can be used to, to communicate, like uh, SNMP uh, uh, going out. You know, I mean, that's a management protocol. Why, why is it that it's going out? Uh, and again, going out is, is a very important key, and, and what, that's what we do uh, with our XGS uh, family of appliances that we, do, we not only do the protocol analysis module and we detect typical things that an AP, uh, IPS uh, uh, do and you know it's not just based on signatures but abuses on the protocol and uh, but we also look in great detail to the outbound traffic uh, we, we also do IP reputation on that but we, we control you know what are the, the, the things that people do on social media and actually we prevent people from from posting information uh, from the company and, and you can do it selectively say so, well marketing can do all the YouTube that they want uh, HR can do all the LinkedIn that they want but ordinary people can only see Facebook for example and, and but, but they cannot post uh, any data from from within the enterprise so those are some of the uh, things that you can can help you locate the the malware at that uh, at this particular phase